Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Belmont Stakes card for tomorrow, June 10th. And we are going to go through the entire card, and we're going to be finishing with the uh, Belmont Stakes, which is race, I believe, uh, race number 12. Um, for those of you who want more, obviously, daily fantasy sports content, you can subscribe to TrueDFS.com. And uh, again, from time to time, I will do a horse racing video, uh, not that often. But I guess for the Belmont Stakes, I may as well do this. Um, I do actually uh, I have a couple of value plays in the actual Belmont Stakes. If you want to just fast forward ahead to that, that's fine. But I do like to go through the entire card. Uh, we did very well in the Preakness. Well, I mean, didn't pay all that much, but kind of thought that horse was a lock and you know, was, wasn't the favorite. I guess that's good. But again, just a couple of disclaimers. You know, Make sure that you wait as long as possible before you bet these races. Um, I'm going to be able to give you an idea of what, you know, what these prices of some of these horses are going to be, but um, there's really no upside in putting your bets in early unless, you know, you're just not going to be around. Um, the good news is, is that we do have kind of advanced odds because the pools have been open for the Belmont Stakes card. So at least I have an idea of what some of these uh, horses are going to look like. All right. So let's just go through this. Uh, let's start with race number one. Uh Boy, is this actually right? Yeah, so I like the two, the four, and the nine here. And the nine is looking to be somewhat short. So the two and the four are both pretty good prices. So get respect and oolong high. Uh, I definitely like those. Now, again, I'm not going to be getting into why I like anything. I'm not going to be giving a lecture on, 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 on horse race gambling or the sheets or anything like that. This is a pure just picks video. In other words... You know, this is who I think you should bet. Uh, if you wanted to stay, you know, stick around and, and DJ the Belmont Stakes card. I, I do promise you this, that you're going to do a lot better with, with what I'm giving you than if you did it on your own. And I also promise you that in the long run, um, you are going to be EV following my stuff. I'm not going to get into all my history with betting, betting on horse racing. But uh, needless to say, uh, this is probably, probably the highest EV edge I'm going to be giving you in any of the things that I do. Um, anyway, so first race here, the two, the four, and the nine, with the two and the four being a uh, pretty good value here. All right, race number two. Um, race two, I think the two solid is really, really um, the most likely winner. I don't know exactly what odds you're going to get on him. This one, you actually don't get advanced odds which is a little bit annoying you have morning line of four to one if yes if you can get four or five to one i think that's great um i, I wonder if it's going to be you know bet down and be more like three to one in which case i probably would not bet it but if you get four or five to one on solid i think it's a solid play so um race two we do like the number two horse all right number three uh the four and the five are decent enough uh, favorites, but I do think the one, the two, and the three are just as good. So what I would do in this race is just try to beat the four and the five. And depending on your risk tolerance, you could play two, three, or you could play one, two, and three. Or if you really like the long shots in race one, you can go, um, excuse me, in race two, you can go all of them, like one, two, three, four, five, if you didn't want to take any risk this race. But I do think that there's nothing particularly great about the four and the five. I don't think they're really that much better than the one, two, or the three. Um, so you're definitely getting value with those first three horses. So if you want it again, and well, you know, let's well, I'll show you what you can do. So you could play the first race, those the, the those two, four, two, four, nine, and then use the two in, in race two, and then the you know, one, two, three, and race three, maybe towards pick fives. We'll put in some kind of phantom bets here to kind of show you the different things you can do. Um Race number four, it's really not that great. I, I wrote down five horses, uh, the one, the three, the seven, the nine, and the ten. And there's really not a great amount of value. So I'd probably pass this race. But again, like if you like something in some of the earlier races and you want to hook it up, then those are the horses that I would use. One, three, seven, nine, ten. Um, race number five, we have... All right, so I think the one is pretty, you know, kind of a lock. I mean, he's going to be really, really short. He's, like, going to be probably, like, one to two. You you won't get even money on it. 
But if you want, I mean, the six, six is definitely the second most likely winner. So if you wanted to do a cold exacta, you play one six, it's really not going to pay all that much. So what can you do? Like, so to start this off, you can play, for example, like a pick five in race one. You could play maybe, like it depends on how much risk you wanted to take. Like if you want to play all the three horses, you play two, four, sorry, pick five, two, four, nine. And then we can use the two in race two. Then in race three, let's just say you didn't want to take too much risk. You want to use all these five. And then in race four, play the one, three, seven, nine, ten. And then in race number five, we did like the one and the six cold. But if you want to use both of them, I think this is obviously pretty safe. So if you played this, you could play this pick five wheel for 50 cents for $75, for example. And that really doesn't, you know, this covers pretty much everybody that I like. Um, you know, if you wanted to go back and get more with, say, the two and the four, you could do that. Uh, and likewise, in like race three, if you want to just use the one, two and three, you could do that. But I think this is a pretty good, you know, a good start. Now, again, if 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 the let's just say we can save this bet if you want or if you didn't want to do that, let's just say that you didn't get out of race two and, you know, solid loss and it could lose. Then you can also start like a, you know, uh, go back to race number. Was it two? No. Let's say that the second race lost. You can start a new pick three in race three where you could do something like, I don't know, one, two, and three to beat that horse. And then one, three, seven, nine, ten. But you're kind of running. It's not the greatest value in the world here. So I probably wouldn't do this. It's probably not just, there's not that much value here, but this is what you could do if you want to get a little bit of value. Now let's move ahead to race number six. Let's get to race six. Uh, where are we? Race six. Uh, I think the four, the five, and the seven are kind of okay chalk. A and then the one and the two would be my next horses. It's probably not a great betting race, so I probably actually would pass this one. Race number seven. Um, yeah, I think that the the favorites are fair enough with the four and the six, but I don't think they're any really different than the one, two, and the five. So I would play the one, two, and the five with as some value here. Um, and again, I think the four and the six are okay. But I think the one, two, and five are certainly just as good, so I'd probably use those. Race eight is is a war. I mean, there's a lot of horses that can win this. I literally wrote down like 10 horses I think I, that could win. So let me just give you a couple of stabs, maybe. Um, New York Thunder at 12 to 1. I like that. Um, the eight, Fort Bragg at 5 to 1 isn't bad. And the 13, Drew's Gold at 8 to 1. So those would be my three top values. The one New York Thunder, the eight Fort Bragg, and the 13 Drew's Gold. Race number nine, just a whole bunch of horses. I just really have no opinion there. Race number 10. Um, okay, so I think the one, the six, and the seven are the three most likely winners, but the one is seven to five. So I would use the six and the seven as probably the key here. And again, not that they're any more likely to win the one, but just because of value. So I would use the six and the seven. And the nine actually is just a little bit worse, but is much longer. So you could even use the nine as well. Uh, race number 11. So race number 11, I mean, I really like something here. I, the four and the eight are okay favorites, but I think the seven at 12 to one is a really, really strong piece of value on this card. So I really like this one a lot. So you want to play, for example, one, six, seven from the last race, or even just six, seven, or even one, six, seven, nine with the seven. I think you could do that. I think the seven is one of the best values on the whole card. And then in the Belmont stakes. Um, so this is my analysis. Okay. I think that the most, what? Well, the most likely winner is going to be the eight, uh, Angel of Empire. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best best value, but 
I think that the eight is is the most likely winner. Um, the two best values, I think, in the race are the one tap it shoes and the seven hit show. Um, uh, quite honestly, I, anybody except for the five and the nine, I think, can win this race. But as far as like the, the most likely winner, I think it is going to be Angel of Empire. And then the best values are going to be tap it shoes and hit show. So what I would do is I would probably box all three of them, tap it shoes and hit show and Angel of Empire. And then for, you know, exotics from previous races, I'll use both tap it shoes and hit show. The one kind of wild card horse here is Forte. Forte could really run a big number and win this race. Um but I'm just not betting him at this short price. But if you did want to use Forte, I'm, it's it's okay. But I would only use him probably with those two long shots, a tap at shoes and hit show. So again, Angel of Empire, most likely winner. Hit show and tap at shoes are the two best values. And then maybe Forte just with tap at shoes and hit show. Um, and I never, I'm not looking at race 13. Race 13 is when you leave the track after the Belmont Stakes is over. So hopefully you guys do the same. Um, so that'll do it. I uh, hope you guys have a profitable Belmont Stakes. Uh, if you want more DFS content, you'll join TrueDFS.com. If you want to wager on Express XB Select, which is where I've been wagering for a zillion years, uh, you can sign up with them and use TrueDFS as a promo code, and you'll probably get something for free. I don't know exactly what. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.